Hello to all my students again. This is the second part of my presentation on Act 4, Summary and Analysis from the Tragedy of Julius Caesar. Now, in this part of the presentation, we're going to have a peek at the divide between Brutus and Cassius. We have previously discussed uh, Antony's transformation and the triumvirate that he has formed with Octavius and Lepidus. And now we're going to see how things are going with Brutus and Cassius. Is the relationship still going strong enough in order to face Antony and his triumvirate? Or um, is there a kind of separation between them? At the beginning of the scene, Brutus expresses his feelings that his friendship with Cassius is no longer in the conspiracy when talking about Caesar's failures and his physical weaknesses, and that he is unqualified to be uh, the ruler of Rome. He also forged letters with the handwritings of citizens that they are concerned about Caesar ruling, and all these things actually got Brutus to accept becoming the leader of the conspiracy and uh, to go against his heart and assassinate Caesar. I believe Brutus expected that Cassius will remain supportive and of assistance to him all along the way. However, since Cassius has already achieved his goal, which is, which is to take down Caesar, now he is more interested and focused on his own motives, his own goals, which is to become famous and to become more powerful. Um, I'm going to talk now about the events or the incidents that have taken place that have caused this kind of weakening or separation between these two allies and that have also caused uh, a degree of distrust. Um, the first of these incidents is uh, Brutus framing one of Cassius's men for having received bribery. Now, um, what uh, Cassius does when hearing of this, that uh, Brutus has publicly disgraced one of his soldiers, is that he sends Brutus a letter explaining to him that he knows his men very well and that uh, his soldier is not vindicated with bribery. However, Brutus decides to disregard this letter. Of course, this was uh, the, first, the first kind of weakening between the relationship. The second incident that takes place is that Brutus sends Cassius another letter asking him for money. He needs financial assistance in order to pay uh, the recruited soldiers that he has in his army. However, he does not receive any word from Cassius and he believes that Cassius has completely neglected his request. Um, the third incident is that uh, Cassius and Brutus, they both meet later on in Brutus's tent and they start discussing these, um, uh, these uh, 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 negative feelings that they have towards each other. And uh, Brutus actually uh, tells Cassius that you are also accused of bribery. You are not far from uh, performing an immoral act. And he says that Cassius has an itching palm. Of course, this would drive Cassius mad. And on the next slide, we will know how Cassius reacted. A heated conversation arises between the two allies when Brutus accuses Cassius of not having a clean hand. And Cassius, of course, starts menacing and starts threatening, and they throw insults at each other. Um, Cassius reminds Brutus that uh, he is a worthy man and a courageous warrior, and he urges Brutus to uh, take back his words, lest that Cassius does something that he will regret later on. Uh, Brutus, having been an honorable man all throughout the play, he tells Cassius that his words are hollow, they are meaningless to him, and that Cassius will not be able to do anything. Um, also, uh, later on, Brutus reminds Cassius of something very important. He reminds him of the Ides of March. Why is Brutus referring to the Ides of March in this situation? Uh, he tries to make Cassius remember that it was 
uh, uh, corruption and uh, over ambition that got them to have this noble cause of assassinating Caesar in the first place. They thought that Caesar becoming the ruler would turn into a tyrant and uh, the, whole, the, the whole political and economic system of Rome would be corrupt. And now in also bribes from the Sardinians in order to give them positions in his army. Um, Cassius later on laments having lost Brutus's love and respect, uh, and he offers uh, Brutus his dagger, as you can see in the picture, uh, in order to kill him. Of course, uh, uh, Brutus will not definitely kill Cassius, and they eventually make up, and uh, they sort it out as having been a misunderstanding between them. Uh, Brutus later on, um, he admits to Cassius that he is suffering from agony and distress because of his late or deceased wife. Uh, he learns from letters that he received from messengers about Portia's death, where uh, it is said that she has swallowed hot coal and has met her own detriment. Later on, the events uh, still heat up, where uh, Cassius and Brutus learn about uh, Antony killing a hundred senators. Remember the senators we talked about, the list that they made where they're going to execute everyone they believe was part of the conspiracy or the assassination. Now, this news has been received by Brutus and Cassius, and now uh, they learn that uh, Antony and his partners are marching with their army to Philippi, and they're on their way to meet Brutus and Cassius's army. Uh, both generals, Brutus and Cassius, are now planning of how to face Antony and his allies. Uh, however, they have different opinions about the tactics of war that they are going to adopt. Brutus believes that it is best to march to Antony and meet will achieve the element of surprise, that they will not be expecting uh, their arrival at uh, Philippi. And, of course, this would uh, be considered an advantage for uh, Brutus's army. However, Cassius has a different opinion. Cassius believes that they need to wait for uh, the army of Antony to come to them in Sardis. Um, he claims uh, the long and tiring march from uh, Philippi to Sardis, as well as the shortage of supplies of food and water, will definitely be of advantage uh, on uh, Brutus and Cassius's side, where they can take down the army quite easily, since the army will not have much to survive on. However, Brutus insists that uh, they should follow his own tactics and his own plan, and eventually Cassius gives in to Brutus's decision. This is not the first time that we see uh, Cassius giving in to Brutus in all the decisions that he makes, even though we later find out that Brutus is not uh, that quite of a planner. He's not that quite of an observant, especially when it came to his decision about Antony, if you recall, when he allowed Antony to speak in Caesar's funeral, and when he rejected uh, the conspirators' uh, proposition of actually killing Antony together with Caesar, uh, fearing that Antony will later on avenge Caesar's death. Um, however, despite this fact that uh, not all of Brutus's decisions were wise, uh, Cassius still believes that he needs to follow Brutus. He is not ready to give uh, in on Brutus, and he still wants to follow him as the leader of uh, the conspiracy. Um, the last thing we see in this scene is Brutus being deprived of sleep. Uh, he spends a sleepless night when he uh, finally decides on the plan of the war and he sends, he asks his servant, Lucius, to play some music for him, lest it brings him some peace of mind and he is able to sleep. However, um, he is not, uh, the things are not in his favor since he sees or I think he assumes to see Caesar's ghost and he tells him that we are going to meet in Philippi. Uh, 
Um, now comes the time where we are going to try to analyze together the summary of the main events of uh, the rest of this scene. Uh, it is quite obvious that uh, Brutus remains to be the honorable and respectable person that he has always been. Uh, he is idealistic and he stands by his code of ethics and honor and he tries to remain just and fair. This is quite evident when he reminds Cassius of the Ides of March. He reminds him that we killed Caesar for a noble cause, which is to maintain the protection and the safety of Rome and not to allow corruption to take over their country and as I said before this is of course ironic since he figures out later on that his own ally Cassius is the one with uh, not uh, such an honorable cause and he is now receiving bribes from uh, other Sardinians to join his army however or on the other hand, Cassius is more practical and is ready to uh, to perform immoral or unethical acts in order to achieve his goals. And this is why uh, he is more focused now on his own motives and his own objectives, which is to become more powerful, uh, whether politically or financially. And this is why we find him receiving bribes from people in order to allow them to become part of his army, which is, of course, financial financially rewarding to them. Since they are part of the army, then whatever gains they're going to achieve, uh, they will also have a share in them. However, uh, Cassius is not ready to lose Brutus yet and is very distressed when he finds Brutus insulting him and accusing him of being unethical and following illegitimate ways to uh, reach his goals. And this is why um, he takes out his dagger and he gives it to Brutus in order to kill him. Um, he tells, what he tries to say is that um, if you believe that I meant not to assist you financially, um, then I give you what is more valuable than money. I give you my heart. If you feel that I was disloyal to you in any manner, then I give you my heart. Uh, uh, to kill me because I cannot uh, take it that you uh, believe me to be uh, unfaithful to you. Uh, in this slide, we're going to focus on the character of Brutus, uh, what he appears to be and what is his reality. Um, Brutus still appears to be a contained and reserved person, as he always has been since Act 1. Uh, Brutus does not confess his agony and distress to anyone except Cassius. In front of his soldiers, uh, he pretends to be contained and reserved and strong, uh, uh, emotionally. However, he only confesses his true feelings about uh, his wife's death to Cassius in his tent. And this is not to show uh, his soldiers that he is weak uh, emotionally or physically. Um, Brutus also continues to be the leader of the conspiracy or of uh, his own uh, alliance with uh, Cassius by making more decisions about war. Uh, I did refer to his decisions before about uh, not killing Antony and about uh, giving Antony permission to speak in Caesar's funeral. And now he still makes more decisions about the war, having decided to go and meet Antony in Philippi instead of waiting him to come to Sardis. Now, this is very much related to the theme of fate versus free will. Brutus, by actually uh, going by this decision, it does not believe in waiting for fate to happen, but he believes in uh, acting on his own destiny. He does not want to wait for Antony to come to him, but according to his own free will, he wants to make the decision to surprise Antony and take him down uh, by going to him to, in Philippi. Um, there is also a repeated motif in the play, which is the sleepless nights of Brutus. This is not the first time that we see Brutus unable uh, to sleep very well. Uh, this happened in Act 2. 
if you recall, when the conspirators visited um, Brutus in his house, uh, he was um, talking uh, to himself in his garden and thinking about uh, uh, his actions and whether he has made the right decision or not. And he was trying to justify uh, the decision that he made about uh, taking part in this conspiracy. Again, we see him in Act 4, suffering from sleep deprivation. And it's quite obvious that these sleepless nights are uh, a result of his guilty conscience. Shame, having uh, decided on uh, joining the conspiracy and having decided on uh, moving ahead with uh, uh, going against Antony and his allies. Uh, the last thing on this slide is about Caesar's ghost. It is quite um, um, repetitive, or it is quite um, it is quite the likes of Shakespeare to always refer to um, supernatural forces. Um, that have an element of foreshadowing in his plays. And time and again, he repeats it in his play of the tragedy of Julius Caesar. Uh, the ghost of Caesar appears to Brutus at the end of the act. And we gather that uh, the ghost is an omen uh, of an upcoming death, uh, which we... Uh, finally, we are going to uh, briefly... Uh, 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 go uh, um, go across the uh, the important quotes in the scene. Um, the first quote is uh, related to uh, Brutus. Thou has described a hot friend cooling. Ever note, Lucilius, when love begins to sicken and decay. Now, Brutus here is talking to Lucilius, another soldier, uh, whom he has sent to uh, Cassius uh, with a letter, and Brutus uh, expresses his feelings to his soldier about the friendship between him and Cassius. He uh, describes it as uh, a friend uh, that is cooling off, and it is quite obvious that he refers to his uh, connection with uh, Cassius as um, uh, ties that have been weakening and have been separating when he says that the relationship is sickening and is decaying. Uh, the next quote, this is again Brutus talking to Cassius this time. Let me tell you, Cassius, you yourself are much condemned to have an itching palm, to sell and mart your offices for gold to undeservers. This is when Brutus accuses explicitly Cassius of taking bribes, and he describes him as having an itching palm. A palm is your hand, and if it's itching, this means that you're expecting something, you're expecting to take money. And he tells uh, Brutus that it has reached his knowledge, that uh, uh, he tells Cassius, I'm sorry, that it has reached his knowledge that he is now selling offices. Selling offices means that he is giving positions to Sardinians uh, in his army that are actually undeservers. They do not deserve these positions, but he simply gives them these offices in return for gold, in return for money. Uh, the next quote has to do with Brutus reminding Cassius of something very important. He tells him, remember March, remember the Ides of March. Did not great Julius bleed for justice's sake? Now, Brutus reminds Cassius of the Ides of March because uh, they had a noble cause, and the noble cause was to protect and to safeguard their country from corruption. And the corruption, seemingly or assumingly, was coming from Caesar's overambition. They were afraid that Caesar would turn into this dictator uh, uh, or to this oppressor and would corrupt their political system. Now, it's quite ironic that Cassius is doing the exact same thing they were afraid of and that they killed Caesar for. Um, the next quote it has to do with Cassius expressing his grief and sorrow over losing uh, Brutus's love and respect for him. He says, there is my dagger and here is my naked breast. And inside this naked breast, you will find a heart, a heart that is more valuable than Plutus's mine and is richer than gold. And if you feel that as a Roman, you want to take my heart, I give it to you. So strike. 
strike my heart as you did with Caesar. Now, Cassius here is again uh, acting in a very dramatic way. Uh, he tries to show uh, Brutus that he laments the fact that uh, Brutus uh, is now uh, distrusting him. He does not have a lot of faith in him since he was accused of bribery. And now he offers him his dagger. He tells him, here is my chest, my naked breast, and here is my heart. And if you believe that I was miserly with you, with the money that you needed uh, for assistance with uh, paying your soldiers, I give you what is more more valuable than money, what is more valuable than all the gold in the world, what is more valuable than all the mines of Plutus. Uh, Plutus, uh, according to Greek mythology, he was the god of, uh, of the underworld. He was the god of all wealth on earth. So what Cassius is trying to say that his heart is more valuable than all the wealth of the underworld, all the wealth of this world, and it is this heart that he offers to Brutus now. Of course, he does this out of uh, uh, shame and out of guilt, uh, that uh, there is some kind of misunderstanding that happened between them, and he claims that the messenger that Brutus sent, uh, asking or requesting for money, uh, did not convey the message very clearly, and this is why Cassius did not send him the money back. Um, I believe this to be the end of our presentation. Uh, I would like to recap uh, very quickly on what the, the, the focus of this presentation was on. It was about the divide that is happening between Cassius and Brutus as a result of different incidents that, has caused, that have caused separation and distrust between them. And eventually, uh, th uh, this separation has been overcome when uh, Cassius uh, regrets and laments having Brutus uh, 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 distrust him for a certain immoral act and they both decide together on how to go about the rest of the war they um they take the decision of Brutus by actually uh, surprising Antony and marching to Philippi uh, to face him there thank you very much